In the following video, we'll cover a rather important first topic. What is the Internet of Things? First, I'll provide a general definition. The Internet of Things is all about connecting different devices together. We're connecting devices that are already internet enabled, like computers and mobile phones, to devices that previously had no access to the internet at all, like thermostats, watches, and coffee machines, allowing them to talk to each other and respond to the data each device collects. It's often abbreviated as IoT for short, and is also sometimes referred to as the Internet of Everything. The Internet of Things is a growing industry with projections for massive growth over the coming years. The entire premise of the Internet of Things is developing devices and systems that will connect to the internet or locally secured networks that broadcast select information to the internet to bring additional functionality and potential. It's a simple idea, which is tough in practice. I mean, what devices can actually benefit from internet connectivity? There are thousands of potential use cases for the IoT. Basically, it is connected water heaters, connected piggy banks, connected motorcycle helmets, connected coffee makers, connected sprinkler systems that respond to weather forecasts or remote control access, connected fertility trackers, connected heart rate monitors that unlock devices using your heart's unique signature, connected garage door openers, connected fitness bands and smartwatches, even for dogs, connected stress trackers, connected rings, home security is a huge area, home automation and monitoring is another big area, Connected webcams, connected thermostats, connected light bulbs. There are quite a few variations on smart light bulbs. My current favorite is by LifeX, which you can find out more about at lifex.co, as they support the bayonet connector. Philips also create the Philips Hue smart light bulb, which are also quite popular, but sadly don't support the connector I've got at home, so I've been unable to try them. And there are many other connected light bulbs. Connected soccer balls, connected buttons, connected advanced buttons, Connected plantation shutters, connected smoke and monoxide detectors, connected power outlets, connected cups, connected batteries, connected baby monitors, connected monitors for those who live alone so their carers know that everything's okay, connected yoga mats, connected wearable communications devices, connected personal assistants, connected carry on luggage, connected pool cleaning robots, connected microwave ovens, connected slow cookers. And it isn't just slow cookers, home appliances, and yoga mats. It has huge potential in cities, agriculture, and industrial applications. For example, connected cities with smart parking, connected farms, and connected oil fields. And all of this is powered by an ever-growing range of technology, some of which we'll cover in this course. And it's also powered by a ton of sensors detecting everything from temperature, humidity, light levels, movement, and more. Not all of these are accessible via JavaScript as per our course focus, but for now we're looking at the broad picture. We'll look at JavaScript specific devices in upcoming lessons. So how can all these devices work together? I mean, what's the advantage of any of this? Well, in the home, the Internet of Things can provide internet connectivity between real world devices in new ways. For example, we could have a house connected with sensors to detect if anyone is home. If nobody's home, we can turn off all of the lights. If sensors detect that it's a hot day and our mobile GPS shows that we're on our way home, an internet connected thermostat could adjust the temperature in our house to be just right when we got home. We can reduce electricity usage and save bills by ensuring devices are only used when needed. Or we could have a security system that alerts you via phone if someone enters your house while you're away. It can send you an email even with photos attached. Or locks that log who has entered where in your house and at what times they did so. In fact, we've got Bluetooth enabled smart locks like Kivo that detect if it's you based upon if you've got your smartphone with you. If you do, then you can touch the lock and the door will unlock like magic. Beyond the home, the Internet of Things can bring valuable data from so many more devices onto the web. Imagine a transport tracking system in trains and buses that tracks where trains are in real time and provides that data mapped and available for the thousands of commuters, letting them know exactly when the next train will be and a clear view of any potential congestion or a city parking system that tracks all parking spots to show vacancies and alert those whose parking is about to expire, or even deducting funds automatically and providing discounts for frequent usage. Agriculture is a big area experimenting with IoT. If you're interested in finding out more on the IoT and agriculture, the founder and CEO of Jasper, which is a big enterprise level IoT platform company, wrote a great article at VentureBeat discussing the potential of the IoT in agriculture. He goes over the potential for productivity gains, the potential for pest detection to work out delivery of pheromones to prevent the need for pesticide, 
and the potential for conservation of water using monitoring systems to deliver just enough water as needed. It's a great article highlighting that the Internet of Things is much more than just the home automation side, which is focused on by so many startups and businesses. In industry, the IoT is making an impact too. Shell, for instance, has what they're calling smart fields. In these smart fields, they use sensors to detect temperature, pressure, and other field conditions, so they can detect potential issues and resolve them via technology instead. It is allowing them to enter into new areas that were previously too expensive to develop. Whilst the environmental impact this might have concerns me as technology enabling oiling companies to drill further into areas they'd otherwise stay away from, I guess it's still a good example of how industrial companies are benefiting from the concepts and technology we'll be discussing. We will obviously be looking at all of this from a much smaller scale in our beginner course. What we are seeing at the moment is just the beginning, and where it will lead is part of what makes it so exciting. If you're watching this right now, it means that you are keen to start exploring the possibilities of this technology, and could very well be one of the developers shaping the future of this brave new world. In our next video, we'll explore the major players and where the consumer level IoT looks like it will progress in the future.